A little bit about Oatman. So Oatman, Arizona, elevation is 2,700 feet above sea level, and it was founded around 1906. And by 1931, the area's mines had produced over 1.8 million ounces of gold. By the mid-1930s, the boom was over, and in 1942, the last remaining mines were closed as non-essential to the war effort. Um, Burroughs first came to Oatman with the early day prospectors, and of course they used these animals um, inside the mines for hauling rocks and ore. Um, outside the mines, the burrows were used for hauling water and supplies. And as the mines closed and people moved away, of course the burrows were released to the surrounding hills, and you know how animals are. They just stay and they breed. So the burrows that you meet today um, in Oatman, they are descendants of domestic work animals. But of course these uh, are wild animals and they will bite and they will kick. So when you're here, please just make sure that you stay a safe distance from them. Never walk right behind a burrow, just like you never walk right behind a horse. Um, and if you see some burrows kind of competing for food and the ears go back, just like with a horse, a mule or a donkey, um, it's not good. So get out of the way because you will get bitten. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. <laughs> anyway, but they're cute and you can certainly buy food, um, burrow food from some of the vendors here and feed them. I was petting them. They are pretty sweet, but just be cautious and be smart and wise because of course they are wild animals. But that's a little bit about Oatman and it's a super cool town. A lot of bikers come here, a lot of annual bike runs here. And so that's pretty much what fuels the town now is um, bikers and tourism. So come pay Oatman a visit, take a look at all the history here, shop in the shops. Um, there's a lot of things to see. Um, there's several restaurants as well and some candy shops and ice cream and all that good stuff. So if you come hungry, you won't leave hungry. So here's just some of the old mining buildings and if you can see like ruins, tilling, not sure what's all up with that. We've got this here. And what I'm standing on, oh, not anymore, which are the stairs to nowhere. definitely weird it's like just a facade interesting not just be my eyes this building appears to be leaning this building is leaning doesn't seem safe but it's a cool building apparently the old jail and over there I don't know if you can see it the sign that says justice court with some information on what it looks like the hanging gallows and some old mining equipment. So as we know, Oatman is an old mining town from the very early 1900s and apparently there's a mine museum over here and it's free. Uh, most places are closing up right about now here but uh, I'm going to run in and see if I can see anything in the old mine museum. Never a good thing. All right. We are going in. Oh, it may be too dark to film anything. Let's see. Nothing creepy about this. This is it. That's the end. Oh. Looks like I picked the wrong day to wear flip flops. Oh. That's not good. We made it. This is cool. Bunch of old mining equipment. And 
things that miners used, apparently, because there's a saddle, there's a wheel, and so forth. So if you ever saw my um, Good Springs video, you know that Clark Gable and his wife, um, Carol Lombard, uh, well, Carol Lombard died in a plane crash out near Good Springs, Nevada, and Clark Gable spent some time out there in the now gone hotel, um, the no longer existing hotel um, for mourning, but they actually spent their honeymoon out here. We are still in Omen. This is where they spent their honeymoon. There's rooms upstairs you can go visit, and then there's this. This is crazy. Check out this restaurant that's inside of the Oatman Hotel. It's plastered with singles everywhere. So if you can make these out, these don't look like the most glamorous chairs in the world. They're very wooden, and they look old now and uncomfortable, but Carol Lombard and Clark Gable apparently used these chairs um, here at the Oatman Hotel uh, for their wedding um, in March of 1939. That's fascinating. Oatman's so cool. This is nifty. Oh, look who's coming. Oh, this one's big. She must be pregnant. You gonna have a baby? Hi. Sorry, I don't have any, <laughs> have any food. Bye. This is the place, the Oatman Theater. They have really cool stuff on the upstairs level. That's where they have all the uh, antique bikes and motorcycles and there's a lot of historical um, stuff in there there's a lot of antique stuff in there so you got to go through all the rooms in there plus tons and tons of merchandise so check this place out let's give them some props the Oatman theater building sorry I look a frightful mess it's so hot and windy outside but I'm inside one of the gift shops here in Oatman and there is no shortage of merchandise on the upstairs and downstairs level I'll have to get the name of this place before I head out but there's this cool antique motorcycle and bike Little bike museum here up on the upstairs, so let's check it out. There's more in the back room. Look at 
this. It's the... Okay, so this is the Celerifier circa 1970. It was the first bicycle ever made. Monsieur Sivrac of France invented this bicycle made completely of wood. It was a very rough device and had no pedals, handlebars, or any other parts of today's modern bicycle. This bicycle could not be turned and could only be driven straight. It was revolutionary in its time. Handcrafted by William Eggers of Goshen, Connecticut, USA. Wow. Cool face looking thing. Look at this. Oh, I can see why it didn't turn side to side because it's on a, it's got a wooden bar. This one's interesting. It's an 1820 Dreisine or Dreisine replica, also called the Lauf machine or running machine. This machine was invented by the German Baron Karl von Dreis in Mannheim, Germany around 1817, being the first means of transport to make use of the two-wheel principle. This Lauf machine is regarded as the archetype of the bicycle. This Dreisine is on display at the Kerf, uh-oh, Kerfalish Oh, I know I said that wrong. A museum in Heidelberg, Germany. This is cool. I'm going to read this one last one because, of course, it was invented, invented by a Scotsman. And you know what they say. If it's not Scottish, it's crap. Anyway, so let's read this. This is an 1839 Macmillan replica. The first mechanical bicycle was invented by Kirkpatrick Macmillan, a Scottish blacksmith who lived from 1812 to 1878. Macmillan's contraption had a wood frame and iron-rimmed wooden wheels. The front wheel, which provided limited steering, was appropriately, oh, yeah, appropriately 30 inches and the rear was 40 inches, attached to pedals via connecting rods. It weighed approximately 60 pounds. That's a heavy bike. I don't know if I'd want to be riding that, but it was definitely revolutionary. Folks, thank you for joining me on this brief occasional adventure down part of Route 66 and into Oatman, Arizona. Um, unfortunately, I got here a little bit later in the day than I wanted to. So the restaurant over at the um, Oatman Hotel was just closing up. And also the um, stairs that lead up to the honeymoon suite that was for uh, that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard used um, was also closed for the day. So I'm going to be coming back another time and doing another vlog. Um, and I will be filming those things for you on the next round. So keep an eye out for that coming up on another occasional adventure. I can't tell you exactly when that will be, but it will be sometime in the near future. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and maybe next time we'll actually ride a burrow. Maybe not. Okay, ta-ta for now.